One of the most important parts of the human body is your digestive system. Yes, your heart, your brain, your lungs, your liver, all of that is equally important. But your digestive system, which is mostly ignored because of the things that we eat, the amount of food that we eat, we overeat, we put in all junk and processed foods all the time, never thinking twice about what we put in our mouth, will then be broken down by the body and used either to grow us, to heal us, or to destroy us and cause disease. The digestive system is so important, so important. Without the right digestion, we cannot assimilate and break down the food that we eat into nutrients which are then transferred to all your trillion cells, which is what sustains life, which sustains your hair, your skin, your weight loss, your immunity, everything. It's all about cellular health. A healthy person doesn't have to look good. A healthy person means that all of that nutrition is able to reach the cells and all of the toxins from the cells are able to come out of the cells and be carried out of the body, excreted, sweated out, or eliminated from the human body. Now, for the longest time in India, we suffer from digestive issues. Common symptoms like acidity, bloating, flatulence, nausea. We have constipation. We have stools which are dark in color, sometimes greenish black, sometimes completely black. We have the loss of appetite and this heavy feeling in our abdomen. Some people have abdominal pain. Some people, they feel they've passed a complete motion, but they still feel that heaviness like they haven't passed out all the stool. Some people just have this dull, heavy feeling. They don't feel like eating food. The sight of food turns them off, and they slowly lose their appetite. Some people have stomach ulcers. Some people have peptic ulcers. Some people have ulcers in their esophagus. These are all signs of a very, very poor digestive system, which means you are in very poor health. Now, this is not to scare you. It also means that your body keeps giving you these symptoms so that you can do something about it. Like I always say, the symptom, a symptom in the human body is the body doing the right thing at the right time always if we're aware and we do something about it. Or that symptom is eventually going to become a disease and destroy you or your health. Today, I want to talk about H. pylori. It's called the Helicobacter pylori bacteria. It's estimated that about 60% of the people across the world live with this bacteria in their systems and don't even know about it. That's because this bacteria slowly grows in the mucosal linings of our stomach and our small intestine, and it doesn't give us symptoms. Very, very similar to renal or kidney failure. You know, we come to know about kidney failure when the, when the kidney is almost 90% damaged. Anyway, coming back to H. pylori, this is a bacteria, and this bacteria is responsible for most of the symptoms that we just spoke about. But today when we get any of these symptoms, we take an antacid, we go, we try to do endoscopies, colonoscopies, all of that stuff. That's great, that's great. But first we should always check and see why am I having all these symptoms? Could it be a bacterial infection? Could it be an infection? And we get diarrhea, we get constipation. We just treat the symptoms all the time, never getting to the root cause. And that H. pylori bacteria grows and grows, inflaming inflaming the inner walls of your stomach and your small intestines. And that's when we get ulcers. That's when we get that bloating, that constant nausea, that feeling of you know, a fatigue throughout the day, no matter how well we sleep, how well we exercise, and how well we eat. Anemia, a rapid decrease in your hemoglobin and your red blood cells. It's necessary that we check for H. pylori. Now, there's a simple test and there are complicated tests. Always start off with a simple test. Always a simple test. Before you just decide to check what's going on in your body with all these fancy machineries today, do your basic test and see if your parameters are fine. If your parameters are fine, that's it. Now, if there's a problem with your parameters, then you test further. Now, when you do a stool antigen test, that should be enough to tell you whether you have the H. pylori bacteria in your stomach. There are also urea breath tests, but the easiest is to get your stool checked for, it's called a stool antigen test that will tell you whether you have the H. pylori bacteria in your system or not. Now, how do we get this? We can pick this up in unhygienic environments. Yes, this is contagious. If we share the same food, we share you know, the same straws, or we drink out of the same cups, or eat with the same spoons, or we share our food with people, someone who has an H. pylori, it can be transferred to you because it can be transmitted through saliva, through vomit, through fecal matter, 
through kissing, through all of these things, physical touch in case you have contaminated the bacteria through saliva on your hands or you sneeze into someone's face. These are ways that we can get it. So usually if someone in the family has H. pylori, it is possible that the rest of the family members may contract the same thing. Anyway, so the precautions are basically, you know, hygiene and, you know, not sharing our food with people that we don't know, not drinking out of the same water bottles, which is a very common practice, you know, with people that we don't know. It may be fine with people that we know, but you never know who has this bacteria that's living in their systems and you may just get it as well. Let's go straight to the solution. This is a bacteria that breeds in the mucosal linings of your small intestine and your stomach. We did a video a couple of days ago about not being so alkaline while you eat because your stomach requires the right amount of stomach acid, which should be acidic, about 1 to 3, which is highly acidic because the right stomach acid and the right pH level of stomach acid sterilizes the food that comes into your system. So if you have the stom right stomach acid and the right pH level, H. pylori cannot exist in your system because the idea of a strong acid is to kill pathogens, germs, viruses, and bacteria that we take in through the food that we eat. But because we're alkaline all the time, our stomach acids during digestion do not have the right stomach acid or the level of pH, and that's why the H. pylori has a breeding ground. So the first thing to do is make sure that we're not too alkaline while we eat. It's a balanced diet. No drinking lemon water, no having all of this alkaline water before your meals, with your meals, after your meals. There's a time to be alkaline. That's when your lifestyle is too acidic. Other than that, your body finds it, it, the pH regulator naturally maintains the pH of your blood, the pH of your urine, your stools, and your stomach acid. Now, when we're trying to fix an H. pylori, yes, there are treatments, and the conventional treatment may be one or even two different antibiotics because one antibiotic may be too weak to kill that strain of bacteria, so you attack it with two broad-spectrum antibiotics in the hope that that kills the bacteria. Now, that's the conventional treatment, and yes, it will help if you have this and it's caused you ulcers. At the same time, if you want to treat it naturally, the first thing that we do is we change the way we eat. We make sure we have the right stomach acid. So we spoke about apple cider vinegar, the simple habit of having a little bit of raw ginger before your meals to stimulate the right amount of stomach acid. Probiotics, so important from your natural food sources like yogurt or kombucha or kefir or your fermented uh, fruits, vegetables, all of that stuff, or you can get it from a good, good probiotic supplement, but extremely important because this is a bacteria. And remember, the more bad bacteria we have, it's a colony. It's your microbiome. It's like a colony of good bacteria and bad bacteria. You need both of them. But when the back, bad bacteria overgrows the good bacteria, that's when you have all the problems. Bloating, flatulence, inability to lose weight, acidity, inabsorption of your vitamins, minerals, medication, and all of that stuff. So you need to have more good bacteria, which is why we need a prebiotic and which is why we need a probiotic. The second thing, good quality green tea. I'm not talking about the cheap green tea that you get in those little envelope bags, which smells so good and gives the color a bright green uh, that gives the tea a bright green color, but it's all fake tea dust filled with chemicals and pesticides. You want to look for good whole green tea where you can see the whole leaf. So you look for pyramid bags because in those bags you can see the whole green leaf. Green tea has the ability to eventually kill and disengage the H. pylori bacteria in you. One of my favorites that we use in cancer as well, nigella. Nigella is simply your kalonji. It's called black onion seed. It's called black seed. Your onion seeds, those little black seeds, are called kalonji seeds, also called nigella. Extremely, extremely powerful when it comes to the H. pylori bacteria. Now, you can use these seeds, you can make it into an oil, you can buy a supplement, but we use nigella in the treatment of cancer as well. Very, very effective for most gastric and stomach and pancreatic cancers as well. And there's a lot of research showing that people who have an H. pylori for a long time have six to seven more chances, higher chances of getting gastric related cancers in the pancreas. So people with gastritis, now don't ignore the fact that you may have an H. pylori in your system. People with digestive issues and bloating and all the symptoms that, we, that, that I just mentioned, do not ignore the possibility that you may have an H. pylori. The sooner you, you find it, the faster you can treat it. Garlic, raw garlic is extremely, extremely beneficial when it comes to killing this bacteria as well. Your cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, if it's local to the country that you live in, 
There's something called Mastic Gum, which we've been using across the world to treat H. pylori. It is super, super effective. It's called Mastic, M-A-S-T-I-C, Gum. It's the gum that's extracted from a resin from a stem of a plant, completely natural, very effective to, you know, uh, to kill the H. pylori bacteria. And then we have B. propolis. A few days ago, we did a video on raw, unheated honey that contains something called pollen and propolis, which is extremely, extremely beneficial. So for people in New Zealand, Singapore, and the Far East, we use B. propolis or B. honey extracts to treat H. pylori as well. People also use a UMF Manuka Honey 12 range to also treat your uh, H. pylori. For all our common treatments, we advise people to crush one or two cloves of garlic and have that with a tablespoon of Manuka Honey or B. propolis, and that's absolutely fantastic to treat H. pylori. We shouldn't forget the impact of stress on the inner linings of your stomach and your intestine as well. We all know when we're stressed, the food digests differently. We feel funny in our stomach. We feel gassy and bloated. When we're stressed, we change the entire hormonal balance and the acidic and alkaline levels of our blood as well, which means we can either be providing a breeding ground for the H. pylori bacteria, or we could be managing our stress levels, improving our oxygen flow, and creating an environment that, that does not allow H. pylori to exist or to breed. So uh, that's about it for today. These are the simple, sim uh, simple things that you can do if you have H. pylori. And of course, it's lifestyle, the right eating habits, making sure that we don't have too much of coffee, too much of tea, too much of processed sugar, because all of these allow H. pylori to breed. Now, if you do discover that you have H. pylori, you need to cut down your coffee and tea immediately. Immediately, because that's something that actually feeds H. pylori to grow more and more. Have a great evening, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. I hope you participated in the 10,000 challenge. Hoping to see your results today. Have a great evening.